Air on the hot seat. Damage has been done. As Flint's water crisis reaches a boiling point, many blame the governor. This was a breach of trust at all levels of government. Tonight, a face-to-face -face conversation on calls to resign. You just got to keep working hard. And the push to get the safe water flowing again. Let's just try to make this as right as possible. Well, as days go by, the people of Flint are much less worried about who's to blame and more concerned about when their lives will get back to normal. Some are pointing the finger, and many of those people are pointing that finger directly at Governor Snyder. I sat down with him to ask him about handling the criticism and about moving forward. You, like everybody else now, has seen the cover of Time magazine. What did you think when, you, when that was the story going all around the world about Michigan? Well, more important than the story, it's just an awful thing to have happen to the people in Flint. That's my prime concern, and it's really about fixing the problem. Um, damage has been done. So how do we get up there? How do we minimize that? How do we look at the long-term care issues? How do we get the water system running right again? You've had um, a parade of people out in front of your office uh, with signs. You've seen the social media from all over the country, a lot of celebrities taking out after you, uh, asking you to resign. Have you considered resigning over this at all? No. Again, this is something people working for me let us all down. They help create this issue. I'm responsible for it. I want to fix it. I guess everybody is hoping that bottled water and filters are the very uh, short-term answer. Mm -hmm. Long-term, what do we do? Well, we're in the process of um, getting the, the pipes recoded, going through that process of testing. So hopefully that'll be something that will be, in the next couple months or so, there'll be an opportunity to get the water running again in a safe fashion and actually have third-party validation of it. Darnell Early of, is yeah. now the emergency manager of Detroit Public Schools. He was one of the emergency managers of Flint and was involved in at least some of the decisions regarding the water, maybe not the mm -hmm. ones that set it all into motion. Where is your level of confidence right now in Darnell Early's ability to continue as the public school's emergency manager yeah. given his entanglements in Flint. Well again, in terms of his issue in Flint, he did not play a major role in those decisions. As a He was emergency manager up there, but the decision to switch sources was under a different emergency manager. Um, what I would say is, the issue in Detroit right now is we need to get the package I proposed about getting DPS financially stable done. That's the big issue right now. And the issue is, is we have teachers not showing up to work. That just harms the kids. I proposed a solution that would invest over $700 million in the schools of Detroit. Uh, there haven't been a whole lot of other people coming out with solutions of that magnitude. I'd like to see it get done, and I've urged the legislature to move promptly on That's it. That's the interesting thing. But back to Darnell Early. Yeah. If his presence in this process, though, clutters the issues, um, adds controversy where you frankly don't need any, uh, Debbie Dingell on Flashpoint Sunday morning uh, suggested it was time for him to resign. Would you agree? I wouldn't necessarily agree with that. Again, it's a fair challenge to the question. The real question is, is what should we all be doing? to give support to the legislature passing a package that would allow a major relief to come to the debts of Detroit Public Schools and a better long-term structure with more local control. Isn't that something that most people would like to see? The mm -hmm. unemployment rate's been cut in half in the state. You got rid of a very reviled business tax. You got Canada to pay for a new bridge to Canada and even turned it into matching funds somehow. And most impressively, I suppose, the grand bargain that pulled Detroit out of bankruptcy. And yet, uh, I think many people believe that what's happened in Flint threatens to define your legacy as governor. Have you thought about it that way? No, I don't think. Uh, the, the legacy, thinking about legacy is not the way I think about it. What I really did think about is, is what an awful thing this is to happen. And it just shows you can, can't take anything for granted. You just got to keep working hard and keep endeavoring to do your best you can. And that's why I want to respond in Flint this way, to say, let's address this problem, recognizing people have been harmed. Let's work to re-earn their trust. Let's just try to make this as right as possible. And back to the schools for a second. It strikes. It's interesting. There's more common ground, I think, between the governor and the teachers than they realize. He's pushing for a $700 million package to wipe out the debt. The teachers are demanding that there needs to be more money in the district. They can't really have any until the debt's gone. They may both be more united on that than I think they realize. And, you know, and that would be a good thing. I guess what I was hoping to hear is that Detroit children deserve better conditions to learn in. And that has to be addressed at some point and get the schools right, 
get teachers back in the classroom, get the students back on a path to education. Those conditions, and unfortunately, it does, it, it does go back to money. It really I does. I wish it didn't, but it does. All right.